Now I want to introduce you guys to David Benack. He is running in Michigan's sixth district, and his opponent is Fred Upton, who is an atrocious politician. We'll get to Upton in a second, but David, welcome to the Rebel headquarters. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. So let, let's talk about you first. Um, if you were in Congress, David, uh, what are the, uh, what are the couple of issues that you're uh, most animated about and would would fight for? I think we have to start with uh, universal health care. There really isn't much else that matters if we can't get to that. The other thing I think that needs to be at the top of the list is some real, true environmental protections. Uh, yeah, I'm coming here from Michigan. I live in the state where we we poison the water of one of our bigger cities and expected the people to pay extra bills for that. Uh, it's, I live in the city which has got the uh, state, it's got the nation's largest Superfund site here, the Kalamazoo River. So if we can't clean up those things, we can't have good public health, uh, whether it's environmental or healthcare, then we're in big trouble all around the, all, in every way. Yeah, now D David, I'm gonna ask you a random question here because it was just in the news today. Um, so uh, a group in Michigan uh, decided they were going to try to get um, uh, gerrymandering to end in Michigan. That they were gonna, it's a ballot initiative to get the voters to vote to end the insane gerrymandering. And you can see where I'm coming at it from in the state of Michigan. Um, what's your take on, uh, on that issue? So the group you're talking about is voters, not politicians. And they have been doing amazing work. I have never seen a petition drive that's as organized as this group has been. They collected about 425,000 signatures and turned them in. It's about 100,000 signatures than they actually needed. So they have absolutely crushed the organizing. Talk about grassroots effectiveness. This, I wish we could all do the kind of work that they did and get the same results. Now, we're lucky enough in Michigan that we have the ability to have a ballot initiative and get around the legislature completely. So in 2018, we're gonna to go to the polls and we're gonna vote on it. And we're gonna get fair redistricting for the first time in a long time. But you've got a pretty good shot at beating Fred Upton. This district's only a plus four for the Republicans. And in a wave year, it's exactly the kind of district that we'd pick up. So if you win the district and they say, okay, well, sad day for you. Now we're gonna redistrict you because that's a gerrymandered district. Are you still in favor of it? Absolutely. I mean, it this, it, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, it, it has to, your vote has to count the same. If it works for you on one day and against you the next, well, then you, we shouldn't have had it to start with. This is this is a nonpartisan issue. Uh, a vote's got to be a vote's got to be a vote, no matter who casts it. All right, great. And David, what made you want to run for Congress in the first place? I'd long been active as an organizer for environmental and social justice issues, but never thought about getting involved in partisan politics, it didn't ever seem like the right choice for me. And that's when Sanders ran for president. And there's probably a lot of people in this movement who have been similarly inspired. For me, it was having worked for the Sanders movement. And then when he chose people to represent his people first reforms in the platform, I was one of three people from the state that he chose to go to the Democratic National Platform Committee. While I was there, I saw with my own eyes that everything that I feared was true. And the Democratic national leadership had created a system where the only people who can run are the people who have millions of dollars or can, who, who can easily dial up those millions of dollars. And it means the only people who, are, who can run for office, the only people who've got a shot, the only people who have taken seriously are the people who've got a direct line to the corporations. And I think 2018 is gonna be the year when we see that the people want politicians who can't be bought. And that's what this is all about. So David, uh, do you have an establishment Democrat against you in your race in the primaries? Got a couple of them. Now, one of them is actually a corporate lobbyist who has given over $11,000 to the Republican incumbent. Yeah, well, uh, you want to talk <laughs> about controlled opposition? It's almost the definition of controlled opposition. Uh, and, and I think that's what drives uh, them crazy about the Just Democrats is that yeah, that they can't control you guys because you're you're not taking corporate PAC money, so they can't pull the strings. Um, so, uh, before I get on to your opponent, Fred Upton, who is a loathsome guy, uh, the super random question: Has anyone ever told you that you look like Matthew Broderick? <laughs> yeah, um, the uh, after I grew the beard a few years ago, that I started getting that. I, I see it. Have you ever taken a day off in high school? and made a movie about it? No, 
I, <laughs> I guess if the, the political thing doesn't work out, there's always that, right? Yeah, okay. I can see Upton on the night he loses. He goes, Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so let's talk about Upton, back to serious stuff. So he's a Republican, I happen to know his record, uh, but but I'm sure a lot of people don't. What's so wrong with uh, Fred Upton? Uh, we could go a lot of ways, I'll just hit a couple of the highlights. Uh, he's over 60 votes recorded against the ACA. And he gained some fame around here and the nickname Flip Flop Freddy lately. Because he told us he was gonna vote against the AHCA. And of course, Trump calls him in the office because he needs Upton's vote. And the next day he comes out and he writes what becomes known as the Upton Amendment. And it's that silly uh, pre-existing condition thing that would have given a, a pittance to people with it. And that's what actually got it passed. So this was his bill when it really comes down to it. He would never have gotten out of the house if he hadn't written that amendment. We would have had about a half a million people in Michigan lose their health care and over 40,000 people in the district. The way I look at it, you don't get to make a decision like that and still keep your job. Okay, so uh, you're for Medicare for all and, and he's for Trump care. That's a giant difference. What else? Uh, another big thing is environment. Now, I, I, I sent you some materials before, but just real quick, you can see with this guy a clear example of someone who's been bought. And he'd always voted poorly on environmental issues, but starting about 2009, he decided to start voting 0% in favor of environmental legislation. That just also happened to be the time that the oil and gas industry started funding his campaign at record levels and when he wanted to get the chair of the House Energy Committee. And now he votes, I think it's about 10% in favor of environmental legislation and still calls himself a moderate. Yeah, when the press allows Republicans who vote 0% on the environment and who vote for Trump care and to destroy Obamacare to call themselves moderate, it drives me crazy. There's nothing moderate about those positions. All right, give me one more about Freddy Krueger Upton. He's taken about a one and a half million dollars from the telecom industry and you can only guess how he voted, how he voted on net neutrality. Of course, he voted to kill it, right? And, yep. and and I want the audience to understand. There's another incentive that guys like Fred Upton have to vote against net neutrality because if you destroy freedom on the internet, it makes it harder for people to rise up and challenge incumbents. So, right. in, in David, in your case, I imagine that most of your volunteers and and most of your fundraising comes from online, right? Absolutely, and I have to say, this is one of the reasons I know we're going to win is because we have a volunteer team that just blows me away every single day. We've got over 100 people who are on our volunteer roster. We've done events this summer where we've had over 30 volunteers and we're talking over a year from the election. And these people are excited, they're interested, they're motivated. It's, it's what happened in Alabama. You know, we get these people excited because they see what's going on, they see this as a movement. And the only way we have to convey that message is with social media. So social media is the backbone of a progressive campaign. So let, let's put up the graphic real quick of how to uh, help uh, David. So benackforcongress.com, all of these will be links uh, in the description box below on YouTube and in the comment section of Facebook. So uh, most important thing is the volunteer warriors beat mercenaries. Go be one of those warriors if you're uh, in the sixth district of Michigan. And if you can't give your time, then give your money. Uh, small donors uh, need to band together to be able to, to beat the big donors. Uh, so David Benack, uh, thank you so much for joining us at Rebel Headquarters, really appreciate it.